Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about this blog post I saw over on the Rails subreddit which mentions that you probably don't want to auto-load your uh, lib directory. I'm not going to completely paraphrase what they're saying here because I feel like there is some value in reading this blog post. I'll have a link to it in the video description. Uh, I just want to sort of talk about the high-level thing that they're, ta that they're mentioning uh, and sort of the solutions that are proposed here by DHH and also by a couple of companies like Zeitwerk and Sidekick. So. The basic idea is you don't want to auto load your lib directory because you are eventually going to put stuff into your lib directory that you don't want auto loaded. Seems reasonable, I suppose. Uh, effectively, the argument is if you have something that you want auto loaded, you could put it in your app directory. DHH suggests, bleh, suggests putting it into your app slash models directory uh, because to him, App models is a directory for plain old Ruby objects as much as active records. My problem with that is uh, even if it's app specific, like he mentions here in any other language, if I'm going into a model directory, I'm generally assuming I'm going to be looking for something that's like database specific. If I go into the uh, model directory and I find something that validates, I don't know, the encryption hash or something that you're using for uh, a specific uh, file type or whatever, uh, I'm really questioning what's going on in the code base that something like that is in the model directory. So to me, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, what makes more sense if you want to do this is uh, to just, uh, you know, make a, a lib directory and app slash lib uh, if you want to go that route. Uh, but this, the ultimate point here is you have a directory where you don't want to put auto loaded files into. Uh, that's fine, but I would make the argument that you could also like auto load from the lib directory and also satisfy this requirement. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that because uh, I thought this was pretty funny. We're going to do a Rails new video. I'm going to hit the up arrow key. So we'll CD into the video and then we'll run a code dot. Uh, and then inside of our video, because I already have this open, you can just come over here and I'm going to full screen this actually. So I have a, a very contrived example here, but hopefully it'll get the point across. Uh, we have our lib directory over here. Now, generally you're gonna put stuff in here that's not like application specific. Maybe you have something that's like a, I don't know, a CSV importer where it imports every other character for some reason. That that's, you know, that could be useful for your application, but other people might also wanna have a completely butchered CSV importer. In which case it might be something that you wanna open source eventually. So you pull it out of your app, you put it into the lib directory, uh, and then you say, all right, at some point, we're going to turn this into a gem or something else. So it's it's really not a part of the application necessarily. Like the app uses it, but it's not like a core piece where it doesn't make sense to put this in another project. So in that case, you might come in here and you might say, all right, I have this thing. I want to put it into the lib directory. That seems fine. You then go into your controllers and you have to manually require whatever this file is. Now, the alternative solution that's proposed on like every result in Google is you put a bunch of stuff in here into the lib directory and then you come into your config, uh, your config and your application.rb and then you just like auto load that entire directory. So if I come in here and I grab, let me just grab this right here, uh, this right here, oops, and I'll do something like this. Uh, so you just come in here, you say config.autoload paths plus equals the directory, which is config.root slash lib, right? So your root and then your slash lib, everything in here is now auto loaded. So that's the proposed solution. You then come into your lib, you make the file, and then you're done. Um, the issue with that is if I put something in here that I'm not expecting to be loaded, it could cause problems down the road where something in the app's not working for whatever reason. It seems fair. Uh, what my proposed solution is, if you really want to use your lib and you don't want to auto load stuff in here that like you shouldn't be in here, you just make another folder. You just call it, I don't know, auto. And then you, you just auto load the auto folder. And then if you have a readme, you just come into the readme and then you have a section in the readme for new developers where you say, uh, uh, auto loaded lib files. And you just say, put them in the lib and then you're done, right? It's not, it doesn't have to be this huge debate. You can have your cake and eat it too if you don't want to put your lib directory in here. Uh, I should note if you put a lib directory in app, so we'll say lib, uh, this will be auto loaded by default. Anything you put in your app will be auto loaded. The only thing you want to make sure you do is if you're running your server, you stop it and start it again. We've covered that before when we made the services directory, which I think is also just fine to use. If you have stuff that needs to go into services, you just put it in there. There's like a plain old Ruby object that your app uses that you don't want to abstract out into its own project that you just put in services. Maybe that might be a good place to put it. Uh, or you just make another file in here and you call this, I don't know, other 
stuff. You just put the other stuff in there. You just put it in your readme and you say, hey, junior devs, use the other stuff, dir. And you just make sure that you enforce the standards throughout your company. It's not a big deal. Like, you did. Yeah, you're going to go to a different company and they're going to use like a, another stuff instead of other stuff. And you're going to be like, oh, this is so confusing. But after like three days, you'll get used to it. It's really not that deep. This is what every other framework and language has to deal with. Seems like only in Rails land where they're like, well, we only have three folders uh, and we can't make more. So we have to deal with these. <laughs> But okay, we have this lib directory with this auto loaded stuff. Let's just put something in here so I can show you how this is how this is used. To do this, we'll come in here to the auto loaded stuff. We'll create a new file, call this the auto library.rb. And then in the auto library.rb, I have something over here. It's gonna be really contrived. Oops, there we go. Uh, it's just gonna be a self.auto method inside the auto library that puts a hello from auto library. Go ahead and save that and tap it over if you want to. Unfortunately, my formatter is still broken and that should work just fine. You can come over here, do a Rails G controller pages home to generate a home page. We can come over to app controllers, pages controller, and then in the pages controller, I can just copy this real quick. In the home action, we can call that auto method. If we run a Rails S and over here, if we come to slash pages slash home, you hit enter, you'll see that works just fine. And right here we can see hello from the auto library because we called that when we went to the home action. Seems reasonable. But what happens if you have manually loaded stuff? Why did I suggest to do it like this? Well, if you have manually loaded stuff, people are probably gonna come into the lib directory because they can't read or they don't look at the readme first. And maybe they create something that's like a manual library.rb. And then in your manual library, you have something that looks very similar to the auto loaded one. It just looks like this. Uh, we'll tab this over uh, and it just has another puts that says hello from the manual library well now if we come over into the auto library and we try using manual library you can stop the server and start it again just so you know it's not a fluke uh, we can come in here and we can say all right well this isn't working so what do we do well in this case it's going to work exactly how it used to where you have to require this file somehow so you come into your directory i'm just going to be very lazy here and paste in a require relative you have to go to your directory go into lib and then grab that actual file of course, cleaner ways to do this. You can use like the Rails root join if you want to, but you get the idea. If we do this and we come over here and we refresh, you'll see this works just as you would expect it to because you have your auto loaded stuff and then you have your manual loaded stuff in the rest of the directory. That's one solution. The other one is you have your lib directory right here. You grab your auto loaded stuff. You put this into your lib directory up here if you want to. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life come over here and refresh and you can see that still works we can stop the server start the server and refresh again and you'll see it's still doing that auto library stuff even though it's now in this lib directory so like you don't necessarily have to create this one if you don't want to uh, if it makes sense to you you put it in your app put it in the lib folder there then sure go for it i'm not going to tell you how to live your life i do think it's pretty funny though that this was like a, a point of discussion or contention uh, that you can't auto load from your lib directory without having manual loaded stuff uh, because you can uh, it doesn't necessarily make sense to have an auto folder in here, but it is one of those things where you can still conform to the rail standards if you want to, and also not conform to them because at the end of the day, the standards aren't perfect. If there was a perfect solution, everyone would do it. Uh, and you'll probably notice that the vast majority of the industry doesn't do what rails does, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean that rails is wrong. It does mean that it's not necessarily perfect. Uh, otherwise everyone would do that, of course. Anyways, feel free to get angry in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.